Hey guys, welcome to another q and I asked you guys on Instagram, uh, like any questions you had for me and I got a lot of weight loss questions and lifestyle in general questions. So I'm going to answer them now. Some of them are repeats, so I'll, you know, only at like once I've already answered them, I won't answer it again. So when you first started your journey, what did you do first? The very first thing I did was download my fitness pal to track my calories. And I did it like really, really religiously, like every single day for a year. Uh, but I think my count on my fitness pal was like past 365 days. This year I've really slacked, um, but I still do it. I still have it on my phone. I still check in. I still uh, like input stuff, but it's not as consistent as it was, even though I want it to be. I think when I get back from my honeymoon and all this year of wedding planning is over and I can focus back on because it's really sucked up a lot of my time and attention and stuff like that. So that's definitely something that I started with and that I think will continue throughout my journey. Um, what when you feel like giving up, what do you do to still continue? Um, I think what what has helped me a lot is that right from the beginning, I said to myself, no matter what you do, Jen, no matter where this journey takes you, no matter the ups and downs, no matter if you uh, slack for a week, a month, whatever, promise yourself you'll never give up no matter what. And since that's like the only rule that I've had to follow, because I don't follow meal plans, I don't follow workout plans, like I go with the flow, but that's the only rule that I've given myself and, and forced myself to follow, I feel like it's just not an option. It just doesn't come into my mind giving up. It's just, it's, it's not an option. I think about, I lose motivation all the time. I think about giving up daily, but it would never ever be an option. So that's what helps me push forward and keep going. Um, what is your go-to breakfast? I, since I don't follow a meal plan, I'm always eating different things every day, just whatever, based on groceries that I have in my house, I put whatever together. But I think like one of my favorite breakfasts is oatmeal with blueberries, almond milk, some chia seeds. It's the, like, it's the mo overall most healthy, makes me full really for a long time. Um, yeah, it just has like a lot of nutrients and I love the taste. It tastes like a blueberry muffin. I love it. So that's like my go-to. Okay, how much do you love all of your followers? Well, without you guys, like, I, I honestly don't think I'd come this far. I really, I say that all the time, but I really, really believe it. Um, who can say they have, you know, thousands of people just supporting them, encouraging them, like telling them it's okay when they slip up and then tell, you know, congratulating them when they do well. It's like, I'm set up to succeed. So if I fail, that's really ridiculous because I, I have all the support I need to succeed. And so I will forever, forever thank you guys over and over. I'll continue to because you guys are amazing. Um, hi, Jen. Will you share a video of your wedding at all? Any kids for you too soon? The kids question came up like 52 trillion times. So that's an important question for me to answer. Um, okay, so will I share a, a video of my wedding? Yes, somehow, I don't know how it's gonna work. Would I love to vlog that day? Absolutely. Like, I would love to be in charge, like have the camera and like film what I wanna film, capture what I wanna capture, but people will think I'm ridiculous. So, I think, like I have a photographer and a videographer, but what I'm going to do is that, sorry, my frizzy hair just tickles my face and so I'm constantly doing this. So if I annoy you, I apologize, but I'm not stopping. So I have a photographer and a videographer, but um, like I don't know what that's gonna be like or what I can post. So I'm just going to ask my friends and family, you know, if you get any footage of me with your cameras, just send it along and then I'll put together a vlog because I think it's ridiculous. You guys have been watching me put together this wedding all year for you not to see like that day would be so anticlimactic, climactic. So definitely. And any kids for you too soon. We answered this in the last Q and A that Jim and I did together. We are so confused. We don't know because I mean, I've always, always wanted kids 
like since I was four years old, all the way into my, you know, elementary school, high school, it's all I ever wanted. When people would ask me what you want to do when you grow up, I wouldn't say a career, I'd say I want to be a mom. That's all I want. And so when I decided on a career and I had to go to university, I became a teacher because I figured that's the closest thing to being a mom uh, for now until I could have my own kids. But then when I met Jim and just us being like best friends and then when this whole thing, this journey changed, like this journey, going on this weight loss journey and then social media, like opening my passion for making films and taking pictures and stuff like that. It's like I evolved. I didn't change, but I've evolved into something different and my my interests and my passions are totally different from the, what they were before. Not totally different, but I have new ones that I'm so focused on that Jim and I really don't think about kids like for ourselves at all. So I would say to you guys like we aren't going to, you know, come back from the honeymoon and be like, "Let's make babies." You never know. You never know in life. There's a saying, you plan and God laughs. Okay, what has been your favorite non-scale victory so far? That's a good question. Wow, there are so many, so many non-scale victories. Like, you know, just seeing how your clothes fit differently and stuff like that. But, you know, something, this might not be my favorite, but it's just something that popped into my head right now is like, uh, we live in a condo, so our car is parked pretty far. Like, you have to walk to where your parking spot is. So I have to walk pretty much the whole length of the parking garage. And before, I would feel like halfway through that walk, walk I'd be very winded. And I could, I felt myself waddling. I just, out of breath, I felt like whenever I would do that walk every morning to work, I felt like I was in the body of like a 70 year old. Sometimes I'll, I'll notice how like I've got a pep in my step getting to the car and how much quicker I get there and I pop in, like hop in the car and I sit down and I'm not out of breath. And sometimes I stop and I think about that and I'm like, wow, you know, like how different things are, like how much younger you feel, like that's amazing. So that's a really good one. If I think of another one while I'm still in like filming, then I'll, I'll say it, but. What do you find is the best way to get back on track after holiday, weekend, or vacations um, where there may be some overindulgence? Okay, I'm constantly uh, getting back on track. I'm constantly having to get back on track because first of all, I have cheat meals. Now, when throughout my journey, when I've had my one cheat meal a week on a Saturday and I keep it to a meal and not go to a full day thing, it's easy to get back on track the next day because I've just done that. I've just kind of veered off for that one meal. When I do whole weekends or a whole day of eating, it is super difficult to get back on track. So that's why my, like the, my main thing of defense, like is keeping it to one meal. So if you make the effort to just keep it to the one meal a week, you will find that your journey will flow more easily. If you start letting yourself do a whole weekend or a whole day, that'll get you off track for a week or a month. And that's what's been for me. And I'll revert back to what I said about never giving up, like that might, that being my only rule, I eventually have to get back on track. You know, sometimes I let myself go for a day, a week, um, a month, but I always, I've never said that my journey's over in my mind. So. That's how I do it, is by just having that one rule to, to live by, is never giving up. But I always try to like, you know, make a Monday good. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes if I've had like a busy weekend of lots of junk food and I feel sluggish because of it, or if I haven't been able to get a, work, a workout in that weekend, I feel so sluggish on Monday. So forcing myself to have a good Monday gets me back on track for the, for the rest of the week and however long. Uh, what do you do when you lack motivation and feel like giving up and when do you guys plan on having babies? So babies, who knows? Um, yeah, that's, I feel, I lose motivation constantly. Today after my weekend, I'm feeling bloated and I'm feeling tired because I didn't get a workout in. 
so trying to force myself to remember Jen if you just eat a, a healthy meal today and you go and work out you're gonna feel so good remember that feeling when you did it on Friday or whatever and um, the biggest thing is looking back at pictures is looking back at the old Jen and just not like barely even recognizing her and just trying to force myself to remember how she felt how awful she felt and how old she felt and how decrepit she felt and just how embarrassed she felt she didn't feel beautiful and um or cute or sexy or anything she f just she wanted to hide and she covered everything up with humor so that wasn't fun at all and so just remembering those things um, and if you're at the beginning of the journey and you don't have like somebody to look back on that was 20 pounds ago, 50 pounds ago, 100 pounds ago, if you've just maybe just started, haven't lost any weight or just lost maybe 5, 10 pounds and you don't know how to like look back and, and say, remember how awful you felt? So keep going. You know, what you guys can think of is Jen promises me that I'm going to feel friggin' amazing and 10,000 times better. So let me keep going. Let me keep going. Let, let me keep chipping away half a pound by half a pound because I, she promises me that she, I will feel so much better. So let me keep going. So just take my word for it and keep going because as hard as this is, as mentally and physically draining as this is, I would take it any day over how shitty I felt about myself and in my skin before. Do you just count calories or, or do you keep track of macros? What's your macro breakdown? I keep track of my calories. I uh, have it set to about 1500. I don't have a specific macro breakdown. I don't focus on that or have goals to hit or like, you know, stuff like that. But because I tend to eat more plant-based foods and um, less meat, I, I make sure that like at the end of the day, I'll check how much protein I've eaten. And if it's like, if it's under 40 or 50 grams, then I try to have something like a protein shake or something to, to get me up there. Um, yeah, that's about it. Jim says he loves me because I told him, stop texting me, I'm filming. Okay, so yeah, that's that's what it is. I, like, so I, I mostly just track calories, but I keep an eye on my protein intake just to make sure I'm getting enough. Um, do you think you will slow down on the weight loss and working out after the wedding? No, absolutely, absolutely not. If anything, um, the wedding planning has slowed down my um, progress. Um, not that I'm blaming that. I've, I've made conscious, a conscious choice to like put a lot of my energy into the planning and stuff like that. And so sometimes I make stupid decisions like, Oh, my hair's already washed and I'm going to go for a fitting or I'm going to go meet a vendor. So I don't want to work out and my hair will be all dirty and ugly. I won't have enough time to wash it. Like I make stupid things not to work out or stupid excuses. Um, so I think that when I get back from my honeymoon, especially because I think I'm going to try to be healthy on the honeymoon, but not like deprive myself. So I'm going to be ready to get back on track when I get back. I've already set up my next diet bet for October 17th because I want to um, just have something to get me back on track. Has the journey become a health focused thing for you now? As in, do you think you will always want to do fitness and healthy eating for the sake of it? Or is it just, or is it still a pain in the ass for you? And are you just doing it for a dress size? I know I think from, I think most of my life it was always for me to look a certain way and for us, you know, for me to be a certain weight and a certain dress size. And I think that's why I've never ever succeeded because once I saw how long it was taking and how slow the progress was, like it would take a whole week, I'd lose one pound, I'd be like, are you freaking kidding me? And I'd be like, this is gonna take forever, forget it, I'm just eating pizza. So that's why I would always give up. But I think this time around when I turned 30, or I was coming towards my 30th birthday, I was thinking, okay, how did I make it to 30 
without getting diabetes, without having major health issues, with the way I eat, and the, with how inactive I am. So I think right from day one, it was a health thing. It was never a dress size thing. Since then, since I've started to lose weight, you're like, oh yay, clothes fit better, oh yay, I look better, I feel better, oh, this is better, that's better. So it's been better, but it started about health and it's gonna be continued about health. And I think that's why I'm, um, an advocate of the slow steady progress a uh, slow and steady wins the race you don't have to rush there is no finish line on a lifestyle healthy journey kind of thing um so yeah i've never been i want to lose this much weight by this much time and when people ask me about my those goals like i'm sorry to disappoint you but i don't have them my goal is to never give up that's my only goal is to be as health like wake up each day and try to eat healthy and try to exercise and just try to feel healthy and be healthy every day what is your job and you spoke about creating an ebook in one of your vlogs any news i uh, wish you a wonderful wedding thank you thank you so much so okay so what is my job i went to school um to become a teacher i worked as a teacher for five years and now i focus more my passions have completely redirected me like teaching i think has prepared me for this like you know being creative and lesson planning and being organized and all of that stuff i think it was a stepping stone because i was never really like i did it because i felt like okay i i know what i'm doing i wanted to be a mom so i wanted to work with kids and it was just kind of like a natural progression but i've never known like passion for your work until like i started making youtube videos taking pictures on instagram like working with like i don't know just like having that creative sense of like plating my food taking pictures or or making a video and editing like editing takes hours and it's daunting yet i'm I'm so excited about it and I just want this to be my path and I'm hoping that I can make this my career because I think it's very rare for someone to just be so in love with their job and if I can have like if I can have that if I can attain that I feel like I'll be the luckiest person alive so I'm really trying to make that happen um so um on the side I tutor to make some money and yeah and this is what I want to focus on and like I feel like it's going to evolve into so like I just see a, a, like so many possibilities so the first thing was an ebook so I did mention that back in the spring I like completely decided yes this is what I'm going to do and I started to like I found like a program, started to look through my food picks and seeing, okay, let me create recipes for this. And it was taking so long. And then just the wedding this summer, wedding planning just completely consumed so much of my time. And I think that when I get back from my honeymoon, um, that's when I'm gonna focus on it again. Cause I've completely not even thought about it for the last like two months, I'd say. so. I'm gonna get back on track with that, just like I'm gonna get back on track with my food and exercise and stuff. Like, it just be more consistent for both. So yes, I'm going to continue that. <sighs> Can't answer that. After you, are, are you planning a honeymoon after the wedding? I hope you are off somewhere wonderful. So yes, we are going to go on a Caribbean cruise for a week and we leave that night to, to go to the airport like so our wedding will probably finish at like 1 30 in the morning like 1 30 a.m and we are going to hop into some comfy clothes wash our face grab our suitcase and go to the airport from that from like from our reception and yeah we are going to be exhausted probably hopefully we get sleep on the plane so i literally wanted to keep that high going uh, of the wedding day and then go straight to the airport and have that whole week where we're on vacation so yeah we love cruises that's like our favorite thing we're going to, like to Caribbean places like St. Martin, St. Kitts, stuff like that and yeah so I'm excited for that do you take pre-workout or vitamins or fat burners 
by the way i love your channel you are so you're so awesome thank you so much okay so pre-workouts no i don't take any pre-workout i was never comfortable with pre-workouts when i go shopping rather than looking at how many calories or fat is in something i tend to go to the ingredients list and look at you know is it healthy for my body is it gonna give my body nutrients so I was never comfortable with pre-workouts because I know there's a lot of chemicals in there and I didn't want that and so that's what kind of interested me in the teeny um, or any green tea for that matter I started drinking just regular green tea some organic green tea and then when I found teeny because it's hard to find organic all-natural green tea in your grocery store a lot of them have pesticides and chemicals and stuff like that so when I found teeny I'm like okay sold I'm just gonna stick with this it's all natural um, organic and that's what I like and that has natural caffeine that gives me a boost of energy and helps me to get through my day or I'll take it right before a workout or whatever so that's what i use rather than pre-workouts um vitamins i take a multivitamin and sometimes i forget to take it like i have a plant-based protein powder um that i use sometimes when i don't meet my like your recommended protein intake for a adult woman so i take protein powder some day, like a few times a week and i take i drink green tea and i take a multivitamin that was like such a long-winded answer. I could have said that one sentence. What's wrong with me? Are you at your goal weight? Do you ever feel like giving up when you lose and gain the same five, five to 10 pounds over and over for weeks or months? I am not at my goal weight at all. I still have, I'd say 40 pounds to lose, maybe 35 pounds. I don't know. I'll know when I get there. I know my doctor would love me to be 140 pounds. I'm currently 177 pounds. But we'll see because if I have lots of muscle, maybe I'll like the way I look at a higher weight. I don't know. But I think because I have a lot of loose skin, I still think I'll look bigger than my actual weight. That's what I feel. I always feel like giving up like I said before and actually this year I've I've lost and gained the same five pounds over and over and over in 2016 so I've actually have not made any progress in 2016 yeah I lose and gain lose and gain lose and gain up and down all of 2016 so it's very disappointing but um, giving up isn't an option like I said so I'm just gonna keep going and I know eventually I think too I'm a I'm comfortable this is like the lowest weight I've ever been when I like before when I started gaining weight I you know I started from this point gaining my weight so I think now I'm at this point my body's comfortable here and doesn't know how it is to be thinner as an adult so I'm gonna have to try very hard to push past this little barrier and then I think I'll it'll pick up again do you feel at times that you're trying and trying and nothing works this whole process is exhausting how do you keep motivated um, no if you are trying and trying and you are being 100% honest with yourself that you are eating healthy and you know within a healthy calorie range and you are working out every day you will see progress 100 percent when i'm not making progress it's because something is missing it's because i'm not doing something or i'm being or i'm being lax or i'm doing things more to maintain that's what i've been doing all year is i've been doing just enough to not gain weight but not enough to continue making progress. So there's always something that you can do. You can switch up your workouts or you can, you know, if you're already eating very few calories, don't think about, don't focus on cutting more calories. Focus on eating healthier or switching up your meals. Um, eating more clean, eating less processed foods, um, maybe cutting out juices and pops or, um, drinking more water drinking more green tea maybe switching up your workout completely because if you're already feeling like oh my gosh i already burned 500 calories for my workout i can't burn more just change your workout like do more weights do less weights do more cardio less cardio um 
instead of going to the gym, take a break, do home workouts, video work, like just switching things can, can often wake up your system and keep uh, like start you up again. But I find when I'm not making progress, I know exactly why. I know exactly what I'm doing or not doing. And yeah, sometimes I get really comfortable and content in what I'm doing and I don't make progress. And, but I can't bitch and whine about it because I know exactly what I'm not doing to, to push forward. I was wondering, did any family, friends, relatives, coworkers, or randoms ask you about losing weight before you started your weight loss journey? That's funny because I just said that. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me and get annoyed and I get annoyed when they ask me. Okay, yes. So I'd say like grandparents who are more like old school, um, or like in my like in my case they're like old school Europeans who um, don't know how to sugarcoat or dance around. They just say it like it is. So like a grandparent telling me, "But you're fat, Jen. You, you're gonna die, or you won't be able to have kids with that fat. So you gotta you gotta lose weight." Or I had one interesting person tell me that my ex-husband was going to leave me because I'm so fat that like he won't, I better lose weight so he doesn't leave me. She's like, um, I've had it all. And I think that my personality just, when people tell, like when people would tell me these things, I would eat more and like, I'd be like, subconsciously, I'll show you stuff like that. But yeah, it only hurt me, it only punished me. So my advice to you is to not listen to people who have no clue what it's like to be in your shoes and to live your life and to be in your thoughts and no. Don't listen to anyone about things that they don't know and just be healthy for you. Don't worry about anything else because yeah, that'll screw for me it just like it prolonged my unhealthy lifestyle longer because i was like i'll show you maybe it was my anger was like masking how sad that made me or how hurt it made me i don't know but um yeah it wasn't until i stopped caring about what people thought and just focused on what i wanted that things really started happening and changing after weight loss how how has your skin become tight? I can't see any loose skin in your pictures. So my skin is not tight. I have a lot, a lot of loose skin and you can see the loose skin in a video. I don't remember what the title is, but it says loose skin in the title. Something like my loose skin after losing 80 pounds or something. So check that out. It's there. Trust me. On an ideal day, what do you normally eat? Every day is different because I don't follow a meal plan. So it's basically what groceries I have. And if, um, if look through the vlogs that, that say like most vlogs, I share most of my meals, but if you want to get a sense of breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, then find the vlogs that say what I ate today. Um, that's what I title the ones that have all of the meals and snacks. So it'll give you like a better understanding. How do you handle junk food cravings and pop cravings? Junk food cravings are crazy and I try, try, try to just, when I get a craving, just wait for Saturday. Um, Cause if I can control myself a little bit, then I know if I just gave in every time, every craving, then I would be exactly where I was. I'd be 255 pounds again. So when I come up with a craving, I'll be like, okay, craving, no problem. I'll eat you on Saturday. So forcing myself to wait and giving me a little bit of structure um, helps me to just control it a little bit more because yeah then i would have if i because i get a craving every single day then i'd have seven days of cheat meals then i wouldn't lose weight so i just force myself to wait for that one day and if i have like seven different cravings i choose one of the cravings for that saturday the next craving for the next saturday and i just just having that like so i don't deprive myself i eat the cravings but i just structure it and just wait for those days and it helps it really does 
pop I don't have any cravings for pop that's crazy it's crazy like I would drink pop with every meal I would drink pop every time we went to um like to a restaurant or to the movies or whatever and now I so when I first started my journey I'm like I'm gonna start by just not buying pop for the house and what I'll do is when I go out for to dinner for at restaurants or go for a movie I will get pop then so it would be like two times a week that I'd get pop and after that I started order I stopped ordering pop at restaurants or stopped ordering pop at the movies because I want to save the money because I'm like meh I brought my water bottle with me so little by little I just stopped having cravings for them and now if I get a random craving for it I'll just have it but I don't usually because I'm like it burns because I'm so used to drinking water and tea that pop like burns I have to pee so badly guys I'll be right back okay do you plan on having any cosmetic plastic surgery after you reach your desired weight loss goal um if I'm able to afford it. You know, I've told you guys before that my biggest insecurity is the loose skin on my arms. Like I, the, the way it waves and stuff like that, the way it hangs and how much bigger it looks because of like how big they were. And then, okay, I've lost the fat, but the skin is kind of still stretched off that big. So I would love to do that surgery above every and above anything. But this month I've been getting even more severe like sores under under my stomach like where the roll kind of hangs there you know what I mean and it hangs over kind of here in the crease where yeah like the crease is just basically no air circulation gets there um, it's always hot and sweaty during workouts and like I try to do baby powder, I try to like heal things with tea tree, oil, tea tree oil and stuff like that, but I haven't been able to keep up with the sores and they, they get rough. And this month was like a lot of bloody grossness and painful. So it almost seems like that would be something I would have to focus on even though my arms are bigger insecurity. If I, if I could only afford, let's say, one of the surgeries, I'm thinking for health reasons, it should be my stomach. But I really, like for cosmetic reasons, I'd want my arms. Like purely cosmetic and aesthetics because my arms don't cause me any problems. I just am so self-conscious about them and embarrassed about them. But my stomach isn't so much about health or about visual because I can wear like flowy shirts to hide it. But they, it definitely needs to, something needs to happen there because it's a mess under there. Too much information? Should I edit some of that grossness out? Next question. Is sex better for you now that you've lost a good amount of weight? Sorry if the question is too personal. Okay, so without getting into too much detail on like my PG channel, um, I think sex is better when you, like the better you feel about yourself. When you feel sexy, sex is better because you're more open and you're less closed off and you're less grumpy and you're less uh, awkward, right? If you feel sexy, you're more like freedom. So yeah, losing 80 pounds, almost 80 pounds, makes me feel more comfortable in my skin with with how I look and therefore things can be easier and freer and better of course of course like unless like you know it, like there could be a possibility that it doesn't get better if you haven't gotten out of the mind frame of who you used to be if you still look in the mirror and see your old self then no matter if you're physically smaller you can still have those barriers up in the bedroom um and it's funny because when i look in the mirror some days i still feel like i look like the old gen but when i look at pictures it reminds me i've come a long way so that really helps um keep my mind frame positive and keep my view of myself positive. Do you ever plan on visiting or moving to the States? I don't plan on moving to the States, but I always travel and I've been to a lot of places in the United States. And so she also can ask if um, I would ever do a meet and greet. I would love to do a meet and greet. I would. Um, I wanted to do one this summer and then 
was so suffocated by wedding stuff. Um, so I would love to do a meet and greet here in Canada and then um, anytime I do visit different parts of the states, do meet and greets there. For sure, that would be so fun. Like, would anybody show up? I don't know. So last question, can you open a PO box for those of us who want to send real cards and not electronic ones? You know, I've thought about, I've thought about that before. If it fits within my finances, then yeah, like I, I would love to open, like that'd be so cool. Like I didn't, I didn't think like anybody would want to send me something physical. Um, like I get messages all the time on Instagram and I try my best to, to answer everything in a somewhat timely fashion or I try to answer like all my Snapchat, um, chats and stuff like that. So I do my best, but if you, I mean, let me know if you are interested in a, physical P.O. box that you can send stuff, let me know. I can look into it. We'll see. So, oh my gosh, I hope this video isn't super long because I do not know how to just answer a question. Nothing is ever black and white for me. I can never just give you a one sentence answer. I always go on and on and on. I'm so annoying. But anyways, I hope you guys, if you guys made it to the end, wa 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 wa, you are rock stars. You know what, if you made it to the end, what symbol should I ask you to put? If you made it to the end, put, um, put a pizza, put the little pizza emoji in the comments below if you made it to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.